What is the Hoshin Canary tree? The Hoshin Canary tree is a method, a lean shop floor management method, Hoshin Canary tree, that will enable to perform shop floor management uh, in the shop by um, creating a structural network of people that interact information through CPDNA. Why is it called a tree? It's because uh, the structure of such a network resembles uh, that of a, a tree uh, in nature. Oh, okay. And how is the Hoshin Canary tree implemented? Well, the Hoshin Canary tree uh, can be implemented in four steps. first step is uh, to uh, understand the current state of the value stream. Okay, so we just go and uh, try to understand what sort of steps, process steps and um, material and information flow uh, interchange uh, is happening throughout um, the value stream. The second step is uh, in order to cope with complexity, we want to create a KPI matrix. Okay, so what we do is um, we uh, take uh, a number of KPIs, let's say KPI 1 to KPI N, and then uh, we repeat uh, those KPIs, KPI 1 to KPI N, that are related to this value stream. And then uh, we sort of create uh, some sort of uh, relationships matrix, okay? And what we do is we say, okay, how does uh, the KPI 1 uh, influence KPI 2? Okay, so in uh, KPI, let's say KPI 2 here. So if, if, if this relationship is, um, uh, has a strong impact, we say, we put here a number 2. So it's a strong uh, relationship. If it has a low impact, uh, weak relationship, then uh, for instance if quality is not impacting cost, um, we would put here uh, a 1 and if, if it has no impact at all, we would put a 2. Of course, the diagonal of this matrix uh, is, um, we can forget about it because uh, KPI 1 will influence 100% uh, KPI 1, right? So uh, this is the second step. Uh, we have understood right now how all KPIs influence each other, and by doing that, uh, we can create some sort of uh, sum up here. Okay, so we can add all these numbers, and then we can say, okay, um, which KPI are influencing uh, the rest the most? Okay, so when we have a list of the most important KPIs, so like let's say the top five KPIs or the top ten KPIs, whatever. Uh, we go and uh, we create uh, what we call um, a hierarchy-less uh, network in which we list all the process owners that uh, happen to have a, a, an impact on this uh, value stream. And then uh, we connect these process owners through CPDNA. If, uh, if you have seen our CPDNA video, uh, you will know that uh, this KPI is going to be uh, the, the check part of this CPDNA. So what we're creating here is sort of a network that uh, PDNA that is going to um, correlate uh, several process owners with several PDCAs or CPDNAs, right? And after doing this, uh, because this is very complicated and cannot be operationalized as a shop flow management method, what we do is uh, we take the hierarchical organi uh, organizational uh, chart uh, in uh, which all the process owners are listed. These are the process owners. Process owner, that's the, that's the boss, the factory manager, or the production leader, or um, whatever. I mean, all the process owners involved. And then we... Uh, uh, put the same information that is included in this network in a, in a sort of uh, uh, yeah, manageable manner. 
And uh, after visualizing this uh, tree, this hierarchical tree, we create uh, our Hoshin Kanri tree. This can be visualized in the shop floor and people can interact by following uh, each other's um, uh, CPDNA structures. Well, this, uh, the, the frequency of the CPDNAs will be different uh, being the highest frequency, the one closest to the shop floor. The, just an example, we can take once a day, once a week, uh, once a month, and so on and so forth. So that's the Hoshin Khan retreat, just in very simple four steps. Okay. How does the Hoshin Khan retreat fit in a strategic Hoshin Khan organizational context? Well, that's uh, an interesting question. Uh, once we have created the whole Shinkandri uh, tree, let's say we have different uh, organizational um, levels that inter interchange information through, uh, these are the levels, okay, this is the uh, senior executive, this is the senior leadership, this is the middle management, and this is the shop floor level. Uh, these are the process owners. We, we got this, uh, this process owners inter interchange, inter-exchange uh, communications through uh, CPDNA. And uh, after doing this, uh, and this takes around, I don't know, for a, for, for a factory of uh, 1,000 people, it would take like um, six months to implement. After implementing the Hoshin Can Retreat, what we do is we create a shop floor management uh, structure shop floor management structure that goes uh, once a day, uh, once a week, once a month, every quarter. After that, uh, we create a, an executive audit that takes uh, once a year. Um, and uh, here, all the process owners involved in this um, value stream, in this um, Mm, let's say factory value stream will be uh, involved and will be exchanging information based upon all the KPIs that have been gathered dynamically throughout the PDCA processes. After that, after this executive audit, what we do is uh, we gather information about the, all the information uh, <coughs> regarding this, these KPIs and then uh, we create a strategy or we adjust the strategy in which the uh, resources will be uh, redeployed uh, and then in which uh, all KPIs, uh, KPI goals will be defined. So this is going to be a Hoshin Canary organizational approach in which this is going to be the plan, this is going to be the do, this is going to be the check, the shop floor management, and this is going to be the act. So as you see, we have a PDCA based upon a bunch of PDCAs in the shop.